Good morning. We are back in the garage today. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about winch cables and the difference between a wire rope cable and a synthetic rope cable and why you really want to get a hold of a synthetic rope cable. I am going to change out to this fiery red brand winch rope, which is a synthetic winch rope. It is a 3 8 rope versus the 5 16 cable that comes with the worn winch that is bolted to the front janky. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things organized and get rolling. So I don't know if you have watched all of my videos and, and really you should. You should go out there and subscribe and like and do all the things. But if you watched the last video where we concluded up at Hurricane Creek, uh, I got myself into a little bit of a situation and just decided to go ahead and use the winch on the front of Janky. It's the first time I'd ever used a winch. So I am not coming to you as some world-renowned expert and hey, I know everything about winches and I have all the information. You should definitely turn to me for everything. But I am coming to you as just an ordinary guy, every other guy just like you. Uh, and when I bought this truck, it had a winch on it. And this is the first time I've ever owned a winch. I've never used a winch before. So there's a lot that I didn't know. So in preparation for this video, and especially after having used the winch, you know, with, with no experience a couple weeks ago, uh, I did a little bit of looking into how does all of this work. And in that process, I went just kind of out of curiosity, just randomly, uh, the good folks at Vic Off Road reached out to me and said, hey, we would like you to, you know, test out and review a couple of our products. And this is what we came to do here since I thought, well, maybe now that I have decided I'm going to go ahead and use the winch, uh, maybe we want to switch out to this. Well, boy, am I glad we did. So as a little bit of preface, I have been a truck driver. Uh, I am not really, I'm more kind of a warehouse manager at this point. It really doesn't matter. Uh, but I have been a truck driver for the last number of years. Uh, I spent a lot of years doing flatbed driving where... You're always using chains and straps to strap things down, whatever, and so you have to kind of know the working load limit of all of your equipment. And sure, you know, a four inch strap, which has a working load limit of 5,500 pounds, will have a braking strength of just over 20,000 pounds or 25,000. Really, I'm not even sure, because that's not how you use the equipment. You use the equipment and legally are obligated to use the equipment based upon the working load limit of whatever equipment that you're using. So your straps and your chains and your binders and your ratchets and all of that, you are not allowed to exceed a working load limit. Well, somehow in the off-road accessory business, you know, Warren and all of the other winch manufacturers it's not regulated, I guess, and they don't have to adhere to working load limits. What they advertise to you and what they will sell you, and if this is across the board. I'm not picking on Warren. I'm not picking on uh, Smitty Builder. A anyone else that does this, it seems to be pervasive. Everyone does it, is they will give you the minimum brake strength of whatever this equipment is, be it a shackle, be it a, you know, a winch hook for the front, be it the, the line or the rope itself. And to me, this sounds a little odd. So as I was preparing to do this video, I said, well, uh, let me find out. I, you know, I, I see that, for instance, this fiery red brand rope, they have it advertised at, if I'm remembering the numbers right in my head, it was 23,890. It was just a little less than 24,000 pounds. And they said, this is for winches from 9,000 pounds up to 23,890. And I thought, that's, that's a massive spread in, in weight disparity. I wonder if they're saying that 9,000 is the working load limit and 23 is the brake strength. Well, let's kind of look into it. Turns out, everyone across the board is advertising all of this equipment just by the minimum brake strength. So, on this 3 8 uh, synthetic winch rope, the minimum brake strength is 23,000, and I'll, I'll quote it down below if I'm wrong, but I believe it was 23,890 pounds is what it's advertised. Uh, the minimum brake strength on the 5 16 steel rope that is attached to the front of Janky on, you know, factory supplied with that worn winch, that's 10,000 pounds, okay? So not only does this have a minimum brake strength of more than two times, more than double what the steel rope is? But if you start using a standard load factor 
which is a factor of five to determine a working load limit, uh, that means that that 5 16 cable that came with the worn winch that is rated for 9,500 pounds has a working load limit of 2,000 pounds. Uh, this rope here at 23.9, it comes out to 3,800 and whatever change, right? But still, just a little less than 4,000 pounds. It would be a working load limit for this rope, which is a whole lot better than the 2,000 pounds on that 5 16 cable some winches, possibly maybe the 12 or 15, I'm honestly not sure which ones. I know some winches come with a 3 8 cable, and that has a breaking strength of 14,400, which leaves you, you know, divide that by five, and now you're 3,500 pounds or somewhere in there. I'd have to do the exact math. I'm probably flashing it below now. This seems, number one, a little bit odd. I'm not sure why, you know, if you take, you know, one of your three quarter inch shackles out, it's printed right on there, WLL you know, what is it, four and three quarter tons, which is 9,500 pounds. And that's working load limit. All of the gear, all of the, you know, trucking industries, everything else, everyone is regulated to use a working load limit just because this is what promotes safety. And meanwhile, we're all out here with our winches with a, you know, 10,000 pound breakable cable that's yanking, I don't know, I want to say janky probably weighs as it's loaded, as we're on the trail, everything else is probably 52 to 5,500 pounds. I've never run it across the scale, so I'm not exactly sure, but that's a fairly good guess. You know, and it's got a working load limit cable on it at 2,000 pounds. And we've got, you know, the Jay was out there standing right next to it. I guess the way winch manufacturers are allowed to get away with this is, number one, they're unregulated, so nobody's really paying attention. But... If it was a really pervasive problem that that cable, if you, if you ever use that cable, it's going to snap, people would catch wind of this and people would do something about it. People, you know, consumers would stop purchasing this equipment. I just think that most consumers aren't aware, just as I wasn't aware as I started using it, that, you know, this is kind of where things are at. And everybody, everybody who goes out there, everyone you talk to in wheel and you're like, oh, the winch, don't stand next to the cable. Everybody knows, right? Everybody knows these things break from time to time. Everybody has a story. I know this guy. I heard this thing. I'm not sure exactly how many people out there or how many people watching this have actually had a winch cable break on them. So I don't know that this is a really wild problem. However, if it does break, it does become a really wild problem. That's why they sell these winch blankets that you can hook over the winch cable, you know, as it's pulling. So it'll pull the thing down to the ground. If it's just kind of unfettered and it's out there and it snaps, it's very capable because it stores so much kinetic energy inside of that cable. It's very possible to fly all the way back, strike the vehicle, strike anyone that is, you know, within reach of the cable. Uh, and that's, that's not good. You don't want that. So one of the very first advantages of the synthetic rope is it weighs nothing. Like... As I hold these two pieces in my hand, I'm not a human scale. But this hook is about the same weight as the rest of this rope. This rope weighs very, very little. And as a result, it doesn't store all of the kinetic energy because of the, the lack of mass in it. So if you're out on the trail and if you get in a situation where the rope itself breaks, the synthetic rope is just going to fall to the ground. Uh, it may recoil a little bit, but it is not going to fly all the way back to the vehicle. And in the odd case that it does break and happens to strike somebody standing next to it, it doesn't have enough mass, it doesn't have enough weight to hurt anyone. Whereas the steel rope can cut your leg off. It can, I mean, I suppose if you get it just right, it could probably cut your head off. Or it can cut you open or it'll just leave a really nasty bruise or it can do any any number of things none of which you want to be involved in right so one of the massive advantages to this is the safety factor of not only having more than double the brake strength and therefore the working load limit of a steel cable but should something go wrong you really want to be involved with the nylon the synthetic cable as opposed to the steel as the synthetic just isn't gonna hurt you the same way. So I guess the other advantage to 
having this lighter weight rope as opposed to the steel rope is simply just that, that it's lighter weight. Uh, there's less weight sitting out in front. You know, when you talk about vehicle suspension and how much weight should I have on the springs, you know, a lot of this is determined on equal loading on the springs and if the weight is right above the spring or if it's in the passenger compartment, which is in between the axles. When you bolt a winch into a winch bumper, winch bumpers are typically sticking out farther from your vehicle than a standard bumper and that winch is all the way out there. So the extra added weight has a much greater effect because of the leverage of being way out there so it has a much stronger effect on your suspension. So as you're hitting bumps and the truck is floating up and down and your shock absorbers don't seem as effective as they used to be and the front end sags now, it is much less of a problem with this extremely lightweight cable. This won't affect your suspension at all. Uh, we'll find out when I pull this winch cable out exactly how, you know, how much does it weigh and how does it feel. I don't know that the cable itself makes a massive difference but it's something, right? You know, you take a look at everything you pack into your vehicle and we're all overlanding or overloading, right? Every little thing that you put in there, like let's say I've got a truck that weighs 4,500 pounds and I put 450 pounds worth of stuff in it. Well, now that's 10% of the weight. So it kind of goes to figure it's gonna lose effectively 10% of its power and you're going to lose 10% of your fuel mileage, you know? And, uh, this thing sitting at you know 13 or 12 or whatever miles the gallon is getting right now i need all the fuel mileage i can get so this little bit of weight load, let's say it's 100 pounds well you know maybe that's two percent of the weight maybe that's three percent of the weight well do you want three percent more power do you want three percent more fuel economy i think we all do so one last thing to kind of add to the discussion about the working load limits and the braking strength of the cables is a snatch block I wish I had a snatch block here in front of you. Uh, some people call it a recovery block. Some people call it a winch block. Some people call it a pulley. Um, but if you use a snatch block and do what's called a double line pull, where you run the cable from your vehicle out to whatever the anchor is, a tree, whatever it is, right? Use a snatch block at that point that has a pulley and then you run the cable back to your vehicle. That now doubles the strength of your winch and it doubles the brake strength and working load limit of the cable itself, because effectively now you're operating with two cables. The load of that pull and all of the shock every time it, you know, it grabs on you is now divided along two sections of rope evenly as opposed to just that one long rope. So in the case of this, now we all of a sudden have a working load limit of up over what? Okay, so we're 23, so we said. So in the case of the synthetic rope, now we go from a working load limit of somewhere around 3,800 pounds up to 7,600 pounds. And that makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's double. But when you take into account the weight of the vehicle and the amount that it's going to have to be pulled on, you know, even if you're using a steel cable, you know, now we've gone from a working load limit of 2,000 pounds up to 4,000 pounds is still less than the weight of the vehicle, but it's a whole lot better. I actually found it funny as I was looking at the instruction sheet, which <laughs> being me, kind of being a grown ass man, I don't look at the instructions very often, but I happen to look at this one and it actually says right here, tips for prolonging the life of your synthetic rope. Uh, minimize the abrasion, keep it clean, avoid sharp ends and use a pulley block for all loads over half of the rated winch capacity. So even right here in the instructions for the rope, it tells you, get a snatch block, use a snatch block. It is a fantastic idea. So there you go. Now you know all about the braking strength and the working load limit, or at least you know all of what I've told you because as I said before, I am far from anything close to an expert on this. But in the little bit of research that I did, I found a lot of information that was very useful. And these are things that really I just hadn't heard before. And I don't understand why the industry does it this way, but they do. So here's where we're at. So thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and maybe I've earned a subscribe from you. Uh, don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified every time we get a, a new video out to you. We'll have more product reviews coming out at you and of course more trail videos. So we'll see you soon.